taping tonight, and I put shorts on, so I had to readjust it, because some people just don't know how to take us. So that's why I'm standing up, so I'm telling you, folks. Father, we bless you, and we thank you tonight, Father. We thank that you brought new and old together tonight. Lord, it's been like an old-timey service, Father, because you brought people that used to be here. And Father, we thank you, Lord, whether they're here or whether they're gone elsewhere, that they're still a part of your body. Yes, They're still a part of your church. They're still a part of us yes, and, and a part of you. And Father, we bless tonight and we pray that you put the pieces of your families together and that you speed healing and deliverance, Father, to those that desire it and need it the most. And Lord, we thank you for tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody can say, Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going to stay up here tonight. That's what I was saying. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. And four. And God is always good. Sure is. Now I can see. He's always good. Amen. People say, I don't believe things I can't see. If they wait and get a little older, they'll believe all kinds of things they can't see because Amen. they know it's right there in front of them, but they gotta get a magnifying glass to read it now. Amen. Amen. Fine print. You know, stuff everywhere that just because we can't see it, we know it's still there because it used to be there. Amen? Amen. So just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not so, does it? Right. You can feel it hurt you. You can have a splinter. You can feel it hurt you, but you can't see it with your eyes, but you know it's there. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we're not going by just what we can see tonight, are we? The Scripture says the things that we can see are temporary, but the things we can't see, they're what? It's eternal. It's eternal right. So if you can see it, it's going to pass away. Amen. And yet the things that you can't see is going to go forever. Amen. Which brings us back to people saying, I don't believe in a God I can't see. Amen. I don't believe in a God I can. Because if you can make it, and I can see it, it's temporary. Amen. And it's moving on. Amen. 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 All, those, all, all the things on the amazing race, you see them in all the different countries and all the different gods. Amen. From the rat god to the monkey gods to this god to that god, all of those will pass away. Amen. They're all temporary. But the true God, the living God, Amen. lives and abides forever. Amen. And aren't you glad? Miracle of miracles, yes, He chose to live and abide in you. Amen. says, if we call upon Him, Jesus said, if you believe in Me, He said, I and My Father will come and abide Amen. inside of you. Yes. Amen. That's a miracle. Yes, it's a miracle He let you into heaven. Amen. It's a greater miracle He let heaven Amen. come and move in you. Amen. 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 Heaven and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew, if he didn't change me when I got to heaven, that'd be the dirtiest thing there. Amen. I would too. Amen. Amen. Whew. Oh, but when he comes into me, it makes me the cleanest thing Amen. here. Righteous. Amen. 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 That's how you're looking at it, isn't Amen. it? Amen. And we need to be reminded of who we are in God and who God is to us. Amen. And Isaiah 54, it says in verse 4, get the right number to pop out here. Fear not. I love that. Fear not. God said fear not. Amen. Why would He say it? Because we're being afraid of something all Amen. the time. Amen. Why is God against you fearing? Because fear has torment. And anything that torments you is because you're afraid. Amen. Isaiah 54, 4. Amen. Anything you fear torments you. Amen. Torment has pain. And God does not want you in pain. Amen. So He does not want you in fear. Amen. Amen. If Amen. thinking about something torments you, it's because fear has attached itself to it. Amen. Amen. So say with me, fear, fear. torments me. Torment and I don't want to be tormented anymore. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Torment go. Torment go. Fear go. Fear go. I made perfect. I made perfect. In, love. In love. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. And that's the truth right Amen. there. Amen. So he said, fear not. Fear not. When he met the disciples after he rose from dead, he said, Fear not. Amen. 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 Every time he meets him, he's having to say, Fear, Fear not. Amen. And that's what he says to you tonight. Regardless of anything else you're going to hear, fear not. Amen. See, I can't do that, can I? Can't be hitting on that to come on down off there. But notice what he says. Change is coming. We've been preaching that for weeks. Amen. But fear not. Amen. Jesus is coming. But Amen. fear not. Amen. Amen. Change is happening all around you, but fear not. 
Now check this out. Verse 4 says, Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Amen. That's pretty good right there. That's awesome. It says, all the, says, none that wait on the Lord will be ashamed. Amen. You'll never be ashamed you waited on God. Amen. You'll never be ashamed you waited and did it His way. Amen. You're not going to be afraid. Amen? Amen? Because you're not going to be ashamed. It's not going to turn out any other way than the way God said. Amen. Amen. You don't got to be ashamed about nothing you've ever done or nothing you've ever said or any place you've ever been. All you got to do is say the blood of Jesus covers it, devil. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus covers it, devil. That's pretty much how that sounds right there. The blood of Jesus covered it, and He told me to fear not. Amen. So I'm not going to be afraid. Amen. I'm not going to be afraid, and I'm not going to be ashamed. Neither be confounded. Confounded means to come to pieces. It means to be shattered and scattered. And just say with me, I don't belong to Waffle House. I don't belong to Waffle House. Say with me, I don't belong in the Waffle House. I'm not scattered. I'm not smattered. I'm not layered or anything else. Amen. You understand what I'm saying there? You can eat at the Waffle House, but I don't belong at the Waffle House. You understand what I'm saying there? I'm not scattered. I'm not losing my mind. The pieces of my heart are not so shattered and broken. He said, don't you fear. Don't you be ashamed and don't you go to pieces because my God is with you. Amen. That's a pretty good word, isn't it? Amen. Don't let the devil pound you little bitty pieces on the inside so that you look like ground up glass. Now, that's an amazing thing to me. I didn't even know they put ground up glass in the paint until I was telling that the other night. But dear Lord, Nissan paint has ground up glass in it. It's in your lungs. It's just a wonderful thing to know. <laughs> I did not know that. But don't come to pieces. Amen. And now look what it says. Fear not, neither be ashamed, neither be confounded, for you shall not be put to shame. And check this one out. And you will forget the shame of your youth and not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Did you catch that? Yeah. It says not only will you not be ashamed, it says you're going to forget the shame you used to have. Amen. You hear me there? Amen. So that says that God is in favor of you forgetting. God's in favor of you forgetting. That's good news. School wasn't in favor of it. School was highly against you forgetting. <laughs> huh? But God says He's in favor and not only will you not be ashamed that you believed on Him, but you're not going to have a remembrance of the shame that you've had. Anybody ever done something they're ashamed of? Oh, yeah. Anybody ever done something they're ashamed of? Amen. Oh, yeah, I've been ashamed of stuff I didn't even do. Amen. 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 But you're not going. But you're going to forget the shame of your youth. That's mistakes you made in the past. Now I'm looking around and I don't see too much youth in here. You don't qualify no more. I remember the time somebody, somebody grown with a baby said, "I miss the youth group." And I thought, "Dear God, you done passed the youth group a long time ago." Now you don't need no youth group. You need a grown up group. You need a mama's group. You need a mama with children's group. You know, youth group left you a long time ago. Amen. 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 Youth has left me a long time ago. I had a card from Cracker Barrel a long time ago. I had these old guys looking out the back of a bus mooning somebody. And it said down at the bottom, age is fleeting. Youth is fleeting. But immaturity can last a lifetime. Yeah. Amen. And I think of that a lot. I think of it a lot because I'm no longer young. But you know the devil doesn't care if you're young or not. He brings up things in your past. Sometimes you're distant past. Amen. When you were young in body, when you were young in spirit, when you were young in the Lord and made some mistakes, yes. when you were young in physical and you made some mistakes, when you just wasn't all that grown up in your mind as you thought you was and you made some things that you could still be ashamed of to this day. And the devil loves to torment you about what you should have done. But notice when the devil's telling you what you should have done, you need to just shut his mouth Amen. and tell him what Jesus has done. Amen. You know what I'm saying there? I, don't, I can be ashamed of a whole lot of stuff. But he said, not only am I not supposed to be ashamed now, he said, I'm going to forget. Amen. Amen. The shame of my what? Youth. My youth. Oh, how old was you? 30? Well, looking back, 30 is a youth. Amen. Oh, I guarantee you it is. You look back and say, darn, that guy didn't know nothing. He was just 30. Amen. That, that, well, you know what I'm saying. 
You look back and say, they were grown. They were 22 when they got married. That's a baby. It's babies having babies. Amen. You know it and I know it, don't you? Amen. You say, what I'm saying is, I'm saying you need to look back and you need to see that God forgave you from when you was 30 or when you were 15 or when you were 12 or when you were 62. Amen. And you need to do the same thing God did and let that 62-year-old kid go that didn't know no better. Amen. Let that 50-year-old go that didn't know no better. Let that 17-year-old go that didn't know no better. So you're harder on yourself than God is. And anybody but the devil is. You need to turn and look and say, oh, Dear God, I can't be ashamed of that person no more. They died and left a long time ago and left me hanging here. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You may have done it when you was 13, but 13-year-old guys have been gone a long time. 12-year-old girls have been gone a long time. Amen. First marriage, second marriage, third marriage. That was a long doggone time ago and then people's gone. But even medical. Now I'll say medical because that's them. That way it's on them. So your body renews itself and every cell is replaced every seven years. Well, doggone the person that didn't, that's gone. Amen. Amen. Left this old guy in his place. That's what it says in that one movie. The guy that did, that's gone and left this old guy standing here. Amen. And the more true that gets sometimes, but understand the devil wants you ashamed. And God says you won't be put to shame and you're going to forget the shame of your youth and you're not going to remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Amen. Widowhood. Widowhood. Reproach of your widowhood. Dear Lord. Now some people in here have literally been widows. Mm -hmm. You qualify. Mm -hmm. There's a reproach that comes from that. There's a thing the enemy likes to turn and do that to. But we also feel like widows all the time because we feel like we ain't got nobody to take care of us. The Lord's supposed to be your husband. Amen. And yet we're living like we ain't got one. The reproach of having no covering. The reproach of having no protector, no provider, no head. See, that's what a husband actually is supposed to be, a head. A covering. A covering. A roof. That's what a husband's supposed to be. And yet the enemy likes to come in and torment widows and orphans. And people that feel like widows and orphans, and orphans is a whole other ball of wax. You may not be an orphan, but you can feel like an orphan and be from 14 children. Mm -hmm. You can feel like an orphan and been from a whole lot of children. You know what I mean there, don't you? And, and shame comes from that, and grief comes from that, and reproach comes from that. And God says, I want you to forget, and I want you to forget, and I want you to forget, and not remember. Now it says, forget the shame of your youth, and not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. God says, I want you to learn to forget, and I want you to stop remembering. The two go together. Well, they do. Amen. To forget. Well, I forget where the keys are. I know I can forget. I tell, I tell people all the time, well, I just couldn't forget what they've done to me. But I can't remember what half the people done to me. Unless I choose to remember it. I have to remind myself, oh, it's slipping. Stop remembering. What is remembering? Remember means I remind myself. I need to quit reminding myself I'm a widow. I need to quit reminding myself that all the things that are wrong with me, all the time somebody treated me bad, all the time somebody took advantage of me, hear me now? All the things I've done to be ashamed of. All the reasons God couldn't help me. All the reasons I gave the devil so much room in my life. And now he's got a right to come and torment me. See, it's all a lie. I need to, I need to start reminding the devil of what Jesus did for me. He took my shame away. He took my sorrow away. He took my punishment and bore it on the cross. And there's nothing between me and a holy God except Jesus, the mediator between God and man. That's pretty good. I can come boldly into His presence. And I can come without fear because fear has torment and I'm not afraid of my Father. Because I'm not an orphan. And I'm not afraid of what my heavenly husband is going to say about how I ran the house. How I spent the money. Amen. How I live. Amen. 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 You understand what I'm saying there? I have advice for widows, and it's the same advice I give all the time. Act like your husband didn't die. Just act like he went on a trip and he's going to come back. Amen. <laughs> that way, you'll, you'll see, every time somebody wants you to make a decision, I wait and talk to my husband. You won't buy no cars. You won't buy no houses. You won't have nobody take advantage of you. Why? Because you're acting like you've already got a what? 
a husband. That you're not in it alone. The devil wants you to feel like you're in it alone so that if you make a mistake, you've got to bear the punishment for it alone and you've got to be the one that's guilty alone and you've got to be the one to suffer alone and you've got to be one God can't help because after all, you're all uh, alone, isolated, depressed, down, you understand what we're saying here? The devil wants you to think that you're responsible for your sins when Jesus bought them for you and they don't belong to you anymore. And that's the truth. And the sooner you find out they belong to Him and don't belong to you, the better off you're going to be. I don't got no mistakes. I sold all my mistakes. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have any mistakes. Jesus bought them. They're His mistakes. Now it's up to Him to fix them. Yeah. And that's the truth. Amen. That's not being funny and that's not being goofy. That's just saying he bought all of the good stuff that was in me. <laughs> that ain't nothing there, is there? And he bought all the bad stuff that was in me. He bought my memories. I don't own my memories. Amen. 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 I gotta go to the library and borrow them back from him. Amen. And as soon as I figure out I don't want to check out that one there, Amen. I don't want a horror movie at 3 o'clock in the morning Amen. on a dark, rainy, Amen. windy night. Amen? God, Why in the world I want to think about that now? Amen. That come up? And as soon as you realize that you don't sin, the Bible says you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Amen. So glorify God in your body and your spirit that are His. And as soon as I start to realize, i got to go to Him to access my own crap. My own trash. I've got to go to Him to get back my old garbage to say, can I go through that box one more time, Lord? Can I find something good in that box? The answer is no, there ain't nothing good in that box. I don't know where it is. I want you to have this box. But you understand what I'm saying? That, that Now He says that I'm going to forget that I'm a widow and acting like I never had a husband. Now look why I can do that. You could say never had a significant other. All right. Oh, no, I just had a thought from a TV show last night. I just had to go. <laughs> I just had to go. No, I had to go. Had turn a page. No, when you're having issues, you turn a page. Hey, no, come up. I tell you what, I've got reach. I, go. I put it on read. I rewind all the time, I guarantee you. I've learned to don't say that no more. And flip that page. Because I want you to know why he says you're going to forget being a widow because he says in a widow is to feel like you ain't got nobody on your side. Amen? And it says for your maker is your what? Husband. And that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. Your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. Amen. What's good about having a husband? When the devil comes to the door and says, go talk to my old man about it, Amen. I ain't got nothing to say. Huh? I don't pay the bills. He does. Amen. I'm not responsible. He is. he is. Huh? Amen. Huh? You understand what I'm saying there? Amen. When the devil comes to the door and says, wait just a minute, Jesus be here in a minute, you can talk to him about it. Amen. Do you remember what you did? No, no, I'll go ask him though. Maybe he remembers. Tell him about it. You understand? Jesus said the devil comes and he's got nothing in me. Nope. And he still doesn't. Amen. You need to send Jesus to the door. Amen. I tell you, don't go that door by yourself. My mama don't want me to talk strangers. Amen. The devil's a stranger. He ain't your friend. You look funny. I don't even talk to you understand what I'm saying? I don't care if he looks like he's from the gas company or not. Don't let him in. Amen. I don't care if he says he's in the cable place. Don't let him in. Amen. Just look right at him and said, The Lord is your husband. Now I want you to understand the Lord is your provision, your provider, your covering. He is the one responsible, the provider. He's the one that's supposed to take care of discipline. It ain't the devil's job to discipline you. Amen. Somebody better say amen. amen. Oh yeah, when I said my car amen. tore up, but you know I was I was in Ooh. sin. That was my fault my car tore. Well it may have been, but discipline comes from the Father. Amen. It doesn't come from the devil. Amen. Huh? You hear what? No, but the devil ain't got no business telling you what you should have done. He should have stayed in heaven and stayed worshiping God Himself and talked about what somebody should have done. But you're not responsible for those things. What you need to learn to do is say, "Take it up, with my Father. Take it up with Jesus." Because if Father wants to discipline you, He can speak two words and melt your heart. Amen. 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 He don't need the devil. Oh, we don't. Amen. Oh, I'm gonna just keep you going here. For the make for for your maker is your husband, 
The Lord of hosts is His name. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Mm -mm -mm. And I just like that Holy One because not Holy One and a bunch of little bitty Holy Ones behind it. He's the Holy One and you be Holy, holy Two and Holy Three and Holy Four. Holy. He's the Holy One. Amen. Of the God of the whole earth shall be called. For the Lord has called you as a woman that was forsaken. He's called you as a woman that was forsaken. Isn't that a powerful word? A woman that was forsaken. Is that what it says there? And grieved in spirit. Well, as a woman. Yeah, that's fine. Called you at, but called you a woman. I don't care if he calls you a woman. But it says he calls you as a woman that's forsaken. And grieved in spirit, a wife of youth when you were refused. He says it's like somebody's been divorced. Somebody's been rejected. Amen? That's what he's yeah. saying there. He, that's what he's saying here. It says that for the, for the Lord has called to you as a woman that has been beaten down and, and crushed and hurt and mutilated on the outside and on the inside and had your spirit messed up and your image messed up and who you are torn from you. Somebody get an amen here somewhere. Amen. Huh? Somebody said the only thing you had to bring was a physical attribute. That if you had some bigger something, your husband would still be with you. You understand what I'm Amen. saying there? All this, and we can talk about feet either. And Amen. all this stuff. <laughs> anyway. If you're skinnier or fatter. Amen? Amen. You know, if you just dyed your hair more. Amen. If you just cooked better. You know, as a Amen. woman that has been forsaken. As a woman that somebody dumped for somebody else, God says, that's how I'm coming to you like a woman that's been treated that way and I'm not going to leave you the way I found you. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now you notice what it says. As a woman that is forsaken and grieved in spirit and as a wife of youth, that means you married him when he was young and he dumped you when, he, when you got a little older. Uh -huh. Huh? Used you. Oh, 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 oh. And it says, and you were refused, saith our God. Now check it out here in verse 7. For a small moment I've forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. That says for a time in your life, God didn't forsake you. What it's saying is that God knows how you felt and it seems to you like you didn't have a husband. And it seems to you like God wasn't there. It seems to you like these negative things came into your life, but God says that's just for a moment that you're going to feel that way. Amen. Amen. Huh? Just for a moment that you feel forsaken. For a small moment. Now what is a small moment to God? It's a blinky, I guess. But with great mercies, I'm going to gather you. So things in your life are scattered, but He's going to gather. Well, that'll preach by itself. Scattered and gathered. I'll be back to Waffle House in a minute. In a little wrath, I hid my face from you. We've all caused God to look at us and say, Man, we've sinned and we've done some stupid things. Amen. But he said, in a little wrath, I hid my face for you for a moment. But guess what? With everlasting what? what? With everlasting what? Mercy. No. Well, I'm waiting on somebody to catch up me. Verse 8, everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you, Amen. says the Lord your Redeemer. Did you catch it? He was mad at one point. But that was before Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. He was mad at one point before He sent His Son. Amen. He was mad at one point before He so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Amen. amen. He was mad at one point, but He said, I'm going to have everlasting kindness and mercy on amen. you. And that didn't start after you got your stuff together. It started when Jesus came and paid the price. Amen. What I want to tell you is God's not mad at you. God's not mad at you. Amen. God's not mad at me. Amen. Ain't you glad? Amen. He's not got wrath toward me. Amen. The Bible says we're not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation. Amen? Amen. If He wanted to wrath me, He could wrath on. But Amen. He doesn't have any wrath because He extinguished it all upon Jesus. Amen. Isn't that a word? Amen. Now I want to give you one more word here to go with that Amen. word. And this is something God told me years ago, and I chose to believe it. You know, when you hear something, you just better choose to believe it. Mm -hmm. I don't see how that can be so. I don't know how it can be so either, but God loves me and I just believe Amen. it. Amen. He forgave me and I Amen. believe it. Amen. He chose me and I forgive. I just choose to believe it. Amen. How's it fair? I don't know, but God says it's so. Amen. It so. is so. Amen. And this is a promise God made. He said, for a little while I had some wrath. For a moment, with everlasting kindness, I've had mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. Now catch verse 9, and we're coming on down. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. You remember the waters of Noah? Yes. 
Remember after the flood, he sent the rainbow. Yes. Promising what? Yeah, we're going to flood the whole world again, amen? Not going to destroy it with water. Not going to destroy every living thing, amen? amen. Why did all that water come? Because God got wrath. Yeah. Amen. Hey, uh -huh. Angry. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Mm. But check it out. For as the waters of Noah unto me, so as I've sworn the waters of Noah would no more go over the earth. You ready for it, verse 9? Yes, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with you nor rebuke thee. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He promised Thank just you, like Lord. never going to flood the earth that he'd never be wroth with you ever again. Thank you, Father. you know what wroth means? Exceeding burning anger. Ooh. It's what you've seen in your mama's and daddy's eyes coming up through that. It's what you've seen in the eyes. Amen. Oh, somebody say amen. It's not here. He promised to never be that way with me again no matter what I did. And when something's saying God's mad at you and God's going to take you out and God's going to destroy you, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Amen. amen. That you're going to catch cancer because of this. You're going to catch that disease because of that. Together. This is going to happen to you because of that. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie because God promised me to never be mad again. Amen. Now wouldn't that be something? Yeah. And God's not a liar. And I don't understand how He can be that good, but I choose to believe Him. Amen. And he, I don't care what's going on. Oh, the air conditioning quit in this heat. God's mad at you. He's trying to teach you something. My God promised to never be angry with me ever Amen. again. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Not about what happened in the 20s or the 30s or your 40s or your 50s or your 60s or your 70s. Or tell ever however long you live that Jesus comes back. Amen. Not bad about something you did. Not bad about something you thought. Not something about you'd have done that you could have got away with it. No, not about nothing. He promised to never be wroth or wrathful or angry or vicious or vindictive against you as long as you live. And boy, Amen. he could if he wanted to. Amen. But he's chose to. Because he's chose. Oh, isn't that a word? Yes. He chose to never flood the world, and He's promised to never be wroth or angry with me. And verse 10 says, For the mountains are going to depart. So, you hear that? Uh -huh. The mountains are going to depart. The Smokies are going to move. The Rockies are going to go somewhere. Amen. You know, I don't know what the Andes are going to go somewhere. Whatever they got. The Alps are going to go somewhere. Just keep listening. Huh? The Himalayas. The Himalayas. How do you know what I was fishing for? <laughs> All those mountains are going to get up and they're going to go somewhere. You know, Mount Everest and the taller mountain than that one. They're going to get up and they're going to go somewhere. When I was a kid, it was the tallest mountain in the world. And somebody climbed it and looked up and noticed one next door to it is taller. <laughs> Which is about the truth in life, isn't it? I won't even talk about that. I'm just going to let that go. There's always some other bigger house. I'd be pretty upset. Now check it out. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills are going to be removed. Isn't that something? Whew. House on a hill. Flood won't come and get you. Hills going to move. Skip the water. The mountains are going to depart. The hills are going to be removed. All those things on the disaster channel is going to come to pass. Except they're going to be wrong about God forsaking you. After people are gone. <laughs> when people are gone, God will be living here and we'll be here with Him. I guarantee you that. Amen. He created the earth to be inhabited, Amen. Scripture says. Now check it out here. The mountains will depart, the hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Huh? Amen. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord that has mercy on you. Amen. Is that a word? I don't care what shakes and what moves. His covenant, purchased with the blood of Jesus, sanctified in your heart, shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That covenant says, what does it say? It's a covenant of peace and a covenant of mercy. The covenant of my mercy, my kindness will not depart from you, and neither will the covenant of my peace be removed. Let me get back to how you're feeling right now in verse 11. Here's how you feel, but it's not how it's going to stay. 